Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson, and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast aimed at intermediate to advanced level English learners. How many oceans are there? And how many continents are there? While at first you might think these are quite simple questions, the answers can depend on where you come from and what you believe. Hopefully, by the end of today's episode, you'll know why there are not simple answers to these issues. But first, why not follow the Thinking in English Instagram page, Thinking in English podcast, or the link is in the description. And you definitely should look at my blog, thinkinginenglish.blog, for all of the transcripts and some extra bonus content. Here is today's vocabulary list. As always, the written list is available in the description of the podcast and also on my blog, thinkinginenglish.blog. Continent. Continent. A continent is a large landmass surrounded or mainly surrounded by the sea and usually consisting of various countries. For instance, scientists believe all humans originally came from the African continent. According to. According to. This means as stated by. For example, uh, according to our records, you owe $150 to the bank. To encircle. To encircle. This verb means to surround something, forming a circle around it. For example, the house is encircled by a high fence. Misleading. Misleading. So, causing someone to believe something that is not true. For example, commercials must not create a misleading impression. Body. Body. A body of water is a large area of water, such as a lake, a sea, or an ocean. As in, what is the body of water called? between the UK and France. Discrepancy. Discrepancy. A difference between two things. Two things that should be the same. For instance, there is some discrepancy between the two bills. Saline. Saline. Containing or consisting of salt. Uh, for example, this scientific experiment requires a saline solution. Set in stone. Set in stone. This, uh, this expression means that something is very difficult or impossible to change. For instance, uh, the schedule isn't set in stone, but we should stick, stick to it closely. Tectonic plate. Tectonic plate. A tectonic plate is one of the parts of the Earth's surface that moves in relation to each other. As in, earthquakes are caused by the movement of tectonic plates. How many oceans are there? And how many continents are there? Well, right now, you might be thinking these are simple questions. Everyone learns these answers at school, right? So surely this is going to be the shortest podcast I have ever recorded. And I'll just say the answer and end the episode. Well, as you may have already guessed, the answers to these questions are not quite so simple. In fact, the answers to these questions may change according to where you grew up. Let's start with the question, how many oceans are there? Depending on whom you ask, the answer is one, four or five. 
This issue has actually been in the news earlier in the summer. Why? Well, if you look at the maps of the National Geographic Society, which is an American research and conservation organization, a new ocean has appeared. The Southern Ocean, encircling Antarctica, is now considered to have the same status as the Arctic, Atlantic, Indian and Pacific Oceans. However, the term new ocean is a little misleading because that body of water has existed for around 30 million years. For as long as humans have been alive, there has been a body of water encircling Antarctica. So why have the National Geographic Society decided to update their maps and add an extra ocean? And why is there still a debate over how many oceans there are? And who decides the answer to how many oceans there are? The truth is that all of the Earth's oceans are actually part of one large interconnected system. You can sail from the Arctic Ocean through the Antarctic, uh, sorry, through the Atlantic, Southern, Indian and Pacific Oceans before returning to the Arctic without having to cross any land. It is only humans and our map makers and scientists that divide the Earth's water into different zones, including oceans and smaller seas. These oceans are usually surrounded by entire continents. Um, we'll come back to continents later. In the places where two oceans meet, scientists must decide where the boundaries of the oceans exist. For cultural and historical and political reasons, and geographic reasons as well, this is often more complicated than it sounds. It is actually common for bodies of water to have multiple names, reflecting the differences in opinions of different countries. Uh, the body of water between Japan and the Koreas is known as the Sea of Japan in Japan, the East Sea in South Korea, and the Korean East Sea in North Korea. As individual countries have their own departments for naming seas and oceans, creating maps and determining borders, there are often discrepancies and arguments over these issues. For this reason, the International Hydrographic Organization, which I will call IHO after this, has um, and it has 94 members, all of them countries, their role is to settle the arguments over different oceans, names and maps. The new definition of the Southern Ocean, which the National Geographic Society adopted, includes most of the water that surrounds Antarctica. It extends up to an imaginary line called the 60th Parallel South, which is roughly where the cold water of the Antarctic meets the warmer sub-Antarctic waters. So in a, a little bit more detail, but hopefully a little clearer, the water found in the Southern Ocean is much colder and less saline or less salty than the water found in the Southern Atlantic, the Pacific and the Indian Oceans. This has allowed uh, an ecosystem of special and unique organisms to flourish, um, including animals called krill, penguins, seals, whales, and albatrosses. For this reason, many countries, organizations, and scientists already use the five oceans model, including the Southern Ocean as a separate and distinct ocean, um, which is now being used by the National Geographic Society. On the other hand, the position of the IHO, who I previously mentioned, is a little different. When the IHO was first founded, they defined the Southern Ocean as reaching all the way up to Africa, Australia and South America. In their second edition maps, the borders of the Southern Ocean were moved south to no longer touch land. Then, in the third edition, 
released just after World War II, there was no Southern Ocean at all. They removed it entirely and instead extended the Atlantic, Indian and Pacific Oceans so that they touched Antarctica. In the year 2000, members of the IHO voted to reinstate the Southern Ocean. However, this change is still not officially approved due to other arguments over different seas. Therefore, the IHO, the major organization for deciding what an ocean is, still doesn't officially recognize the Southern Ocean, and it is not likely it will do so anytime soon, because those other arguments, for example, between Korea and Japan, those arguments still exist and probably won't be solved. So how many oceans are there? Well, according to most scientists and governments, there are five. Arctic, Atlantic, Indian, Pacific and Southern. According to the IHO, there are only four. And in reality, all of the oceans are actually connected. And oceans are defined by humans. So maybe there is actually just one large, major ocean. The next question is similarly debated. How many continents are there? Well, continents are generally understood to be large, continuous, distinct masses of land, um, ideally but not necessarily separated by expanses of water. However, there is no strict criteria to define a continent, and instead different people and different countries and different organizations use a combination of geography, history, culture and even politics to define continents. Therefore, when you ask the question, how many continents are there? The answer is not set in stone. And often the answer depends on where you grew up. The continent model I learnt at school and probably the most widely adopted model around the world, is that there are seven continents. Africa, Europe, Asia, North America, South America, Australia or Oceania, and Antarctica. However, if you come from a Southern European country, like France, Italy or Spain, or if you come from Latin America, you probably learnt at school that there are only six continents. North and South America are combined into a single continent. Parts of Russia, Eastern Europe and Japan sometimes teach that there are six continents as well. But they combine Europe and Asia into the single continent Eurasia. The Olympics use a five continent model combining the Americas and um, excluding Antarctica, as no one lives there. That's why there are five rings on the Olympic flag and logo, one for each continent that they understand. As you can see, there is a lot of debate over how many continents there are. And if we were to use a stricter definition or criteria, then perhaps we would think that there are only four continents. This is because Europe, Asia and Africa are actually all connected by land. So perhaps they could just be seen as one super continent, perhaps Afro-Eurasia. Moreover, only 200 years ago, some people argued that there were just two continents, the old Europe, Africa and Asia and the new, the Americas. Clearly, the definitions we use to determine continents are not just based on geographic fact. What splits Asia and Europe, for example? If we think about the massive country of Russia, it's generally considered to be part of Europe more than Asia. Um, and the Ural Mountains are seen as separating the Asian and European parts of the country. However, the only reason that this is the case the only reason the Ural Mountains are seen as the dividing line is because many years ago, the Russians wanted their great cities of Moscow and St. Petersburg to be in Europe. So they defined 
the Asian part of the country, as being on the other side of the Ural Mountains. There was no scientific test or geographic uh, identity that could help. Sometimes people try to define continents based on tectonic plates, but historically this was never even a consideration. And nearly every continent contains multiple plates. Politics doesn't also doesn't always matter. Hawaii is part of the USA, but is in the continent of Oceania, while Greenland is controlled by Denmark, but is not European. Ultimately, and similar to the ocean question before, the answer depends on who you ask. It depends on where you come from, what you learnt at school, and what definition you believe in. As I said earlier, uh, the most common definition at the moment includes seven continents, but you can easily argue that there are just six or five or even four. And if humans live for long enough, we might even be around to see new continents and oceans in millions or billions of years in the future. Because our continents don't stay still. They are actually drifting about 2.5 centimeters every year. That might not sound very fast, but in a billion years, those continents could be in very different places. So here is today's final thought. On this episode of Thinking in English, I tried to answer two surprisingly complicated geography questions. How many oceans are there and how many continents are there? As I try to show, there are no definite answers to these questions, and instead it depends on where you come from and what definition do you believe. Uh, for me, personally, I grew up um, thinking and at school I learned that there were seven continents and five oceans. But how about you? What do you think? Tell me how many oceans or how many continents you learn about in your country. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed it, please leave a review or rating, recommend it to your friends, or let me know on Instagram. My Instagram is Thinking in English Podcast. The link should be in the description. Uh, and make sure you check out the Thinking in English blog. I love hearing from listeners, and I really appreciate all of the messages I have received over the past few months. Feel free to send me a message or I don't know, give me some advice or recommend a topic. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.